Okay, I've been holding off as long as I can, but we need to get into some math. Oh man, math? Color correction by the numbers. What I want you to do is go into your exercise files and open up Pyramid Math. It's right there. And I'll open that bad boy up. Go into your Layers panel. I do have something for you. And this is the math that we're going to do. See, so, well, it looks complicated. Actually, it isn't. It's very easy. Now, why do we need math to fix an image? We've been fixing it with colors. In previous chapters, we've used the eyedroppers. You showed us how to do that. But I had the eyedropper set up a particular way. And if you remember, I said I would eventually get to how I corrected this image. This image doesn't have a pure black or a pure white in it. And understand what happens when you, and let me go ahead and do this, pick up levels. When you go into the black eyedropper and click somewhere, you're saying to the computer in default, that's a pure black. And when you click with the white, you're saying that's a pure white. This image doesn't have a pure black or pure white. So I'm going to force an area to clip to white and black. And that's why sometimes the eyedroppers don't work for you. But you still want to use them because you can't figure out another way to do it. What do you do? You have to change the eyedroppers. You have to give them different values. Because if you double click on an eyedropper, you get this. 255, 255, and 255 is pure white. And if I do the same thing to black, 000 is pure black. So how do I decide what to change those numbers to? That's a good question. What I want you to do first is we need to locate the darkest and lightest areas on this image. Now we could use our eyedropper and then open up something called info. I'll go to the window up here. We get onto info. And you might have it right over here. And there's these numbers. And we can come over here. Now I'm looking at these right now, the RGBs. And I would look for the numbers that would be the lowest and the highest. But that might take you a bit of time. So this is what we're going to do first before we do any math. So we're going to come up here, we're going to go to the word image on the pull down menu and go down to adjustments threshold. Now threshold is going to split the image into black and white. Incidentally, make sure you have the photograph selected in the layers panel. Down here, we come over and we say, okay, now where's the darkest area? Where's the lightest area? If we go this way, and keep going, the last area to lose it is going to be the darkest area. And it looks like that area right over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click in that area. Now watch what happens over here when I do. It creates a color sample, number one. You can see the number one down here. And it's telling me it's 15, 13, 11. That's the darkest area. Let's go the other way and find the lightest. Actually, we did this pretty much in another lesson, but I told you I had the eyedroppers already set up. This is going to be our lightest area. So I'm going to get right in there and I'm going to shift click again. That's our second color sampler and we have 179, 158, and 117. So now we have the information we need to make the math to make this work. Do not click OK, click Cancel. We're back to the image, we have our stuff. Again, if we go back into here, you can see if I open this up, there are the calculations that we need. Those are the ones we need. First off, we'll go to shadows. We're going to add the three numbers up that we have and divide by nine and round up. So if we come back over to info, the three numbers are 15, 13, and 11. That comes to 39. Divide by nine, that's 4.3, round up to five. So remember the number five. I'm writing those numbers down so I don't forget. The next one, 179, 158, and 117. That equals 454 divided by 9. That equals 50.44. Go ahead and round that up to 51. But that's not the number we need. There's one more thing we need to do to white. If we go back into our layers and you turn that back on again, after we round up, we have to subtract it from 255. Now think of it this way. When you work with levels, you start with the number 0 for black, but you start with the number 255 for white. So we don't start with the number 255 and say 0. We have to subtract back down the road, and we have to subtract 51 points from 255. And of course, that comes to 204. Now, the one thing I love about doing videos like this is besides the fact that I do have this information for you right here, 
it's very easy for you to kind of replay it and do it over again until you kind of get it. The two numbers we have are a number five for the black eyedropper and a number, what was it, 204 for this one right here. We're going to go back into levels. We're going to go to the black eyedropper. I want you to change these numbers right here to five, five, five. They have to be the same number because that's tonal value, not color. Click OK. It's going to ask you if you want to make that a default. I'll say yes. Come back over here, go to the white one, and we're going to type in, uh, what was it, 204, 204, 204. Click OK. And yes, I want to save that. If we did this correctly, we should be two clicks away from correcting this image. So let's start with, say, black. Doesn't really matter. We'll start with black and get into our target and click. And get a little bit darker because five's not that very far off from zero anyway. And we'll go into white, and we'll see if we can get into our target. That's a smaller area. If you miss it, just click again. All right. Two clicks. Using, I know it's a four-letter word, using math to make the selection work for us because we're telling the computer. This is what we're saying. Computer, that's not really pure black. That's actually a few points away from pure black, so don't blow it out to black. And computer, that's not pure white. It's actually 51 points out of 255 away, so don't blow that out to white. If you use this math, it's just one more way to try to correct an image. But even if you're using it, it's not really that difficult, is it? On to the next.